हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू शून्य आई योर प्रोग्राम ऑफ टॉप 50 रैपिड करंट अफेयर्स फॉर ईच ऑफ द मंथ स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द मंथ ऑफ मे ऑन द डेज इट विल बी कवर्ड फ्रॉम वन टू फिफ्थ वन मंथ विल बी कवर्ड फ्रॉम इलेवन टू फिफ्टीन वन मंथ विल बी कवर्ड एंड ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट टू ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ वन मंथ विल बी कवर्ड ओके एंड द टॉपिक्स आर डिवाइडेड इन सच अ मैनर दैट यू कैन इजिली कॉम्प्रीहेंड दैम 21st January economic development of the month of July. Some students get confused that sir, whether we are covering the month of January or July. The whole month of July, top 50 current affairs topics will be covered and summarized in an organized manner. 22nd January polity governance and international relations. 23rd January environment topic. You know important news will be discussed. 24th January science and tech of the month of July will be discussed. 25th January reports, indices, defence, art and culture, miscellaneous, government schemes, all other important things will be discussed. So let's start. First topic is All India Judicial Services. See, Article 312 has already been asked in the mains examination of UPSC. It has a correlation with mains and prelims also. Recently, what has happened that you know the president of india advocated for all india judicial services all india judicial services to enhance the diversity in the judiciary by increasing the representation from marginalized social groups india you know is a very diversified country but from all the sections people are coming to the judiciary or not to have a to create a talent pool we need to conduct examination on the lines of all india services how many all india services we have right now all india services you know ias how many of you want to become ias tell me in the comment box and ips certain students put it as their first preference ips then indian forest services indian forest services not indian foreign services it is indian forest services these three services are in the all india services apart from that we want to create all india judicial services on the basis of examination okay Article three hundred twelve provides for the establishment of all India judicial services similar to the central civil services upon a resolution by the Rajya Sabha supported by at least two third of its members. Okay, what would be the benefit that if all India judicial services is there? We know first judges case, second judges case, third judges case had been there. Okay, and Jack was there that was struck down by the Supreme Court. Okay, so all India judicial services is in the news and could be asked in your prelims examination. To to ensure uniform and high standard of the selection, just like UPSC civil services examination, so many students are preparing and giving it on the basis of merit and talent they are selected, and from the diverse social background, ethnic background, cultural background, they are coming to the services and understanding the problem better. All India Judicial Services will fill the vacancies. We we need more judges to solve the pendency of the cases into the courts. it will increase the representation and diversity into the judges pool reduce the scope of judicial and executive intervention you know the executive intervention into the njac was there and judicial intervention will also be stopped on only on the uh, basis of examination it would be conducted it would create a pool of talented and experienced judges till now what we have is a concrete decision has not been made on it so current status no consensus on aijs due to diverging opinions on it that judiciary you know uh, it should not be uh, with a co competitive examination reservation should not be given here lot many arguments are there or the pros and cons side about the justice meter certain facts are there you can look into it for the prisons prison reforms which state has done the best it is kerala jharkhand did the worst in terms of judiciary tamil nadu was on top score 6.99 and bihar performed the worst in terms of judiciary in the justice meter legal aid again kerala topped legal aid to the prisons you can relate it policing tamil nadu topped although prima facie maharashtra state ips uh, you know the cadre that they uh, like the most is maharashtra maharashtra police but tamil nadu topped the uh, score in policing up was at the bottom with a score and whereas bihar got better rank than the up in terms of policing so justice meter while overall topper was maharashtra emerged as the overall topper among the large and medium states in justice delivery 
गवर्नर्स पावर ओवर स्टेट बिल्स स्टैटिक पोर्शन स्टूडेंट गवर्नर एंड प्रेसिडेंट सुपर इंपॉर्टेंट प्रीवियस ईयर द इलेक्शन हैपन फॉर द प्रेसिडेंट एंड गवर्नर ऑल्सो नाउ रिसेंटली इट इज इन द न्यूज बिकॉज सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया स्टेटेड दैट वेन द गवर्नर चूज टू विथ विथ होल्ड एस एंड टू अ बिल इट इज मैंडेटरी फॉर दैम टू फॉलो अ स्पेसिफिक कोर्स ऑफ एक्शन आउटलाइन इन आर्टिकल टू हंड्रेड क्वेश्चन दैट विल बी कमिंग इन योर एग्जामिनेशन इज वॉट काइंड ऑफ डिस्क्रिप्शनरी पावर्स गवर्नर हैज टू टाइप्स वन इज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल डिस्क्रिप्शनरी पार्स वन इज सिचुएशनल डिस्क्रिप्शनरी पार्स द क्वेश्चन वुड बी इन द एग्जामिनेशन वॉट आर द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल डिस्क्रिप्शनरी पार्स विद द गवर्नर and in the options it will be mixed with situational discretionary powers you should be able to differentiate between both of them so in the constitutional let's see when they have to reserve a bill for the consideration to the president it's a constitutional discretionary power of governor when he has to recommend for president's rule in a state and when give additional charge as administrator of union territory these are the examples of constitutional discretion of the governors situational for appointing chief minister after no party gets clear majority who would be the chief minister he would appoint the chief minister and ask him or her to prove the majority in the house when he dismisses council of ministers on an inability to prove the confidence when the no confidence you know motion is passed and the government cannot defend it then it is the situational discretion when he dissolves the assembly when it loses the majority this is also situational discretion you know options available with the governor purely static portion here you can easily understand that yet what are the options available and what is one of the obligatory things he can reserve the bill withhold the bill and ask for president's assent the article 200 says that reason should be mentioned why the governor is withholding the bill the governor it it the reservation is obligate the uh, reservation is obligatory where the bill passed by the state legislature endangers the position of the state high court in that case the reservation is obligatory now it mandates the governor to communicate the reasons for withholding this is important students here the question will be coming assent and prompt the legislature to reconsider the bill article 201 says it states that when a bill is reserved for the consideration of the president the president may give assent or withhold the assent to the bill or he can return the bill to the legislature for reconsideration so these are the powers over the state bills zonal councils you know that india has been divided into five zonal councils plus northeastern council from a different act zonal council is a statutory body or constitutional body this question would be coming it is a statutory body formed with the act states reorganization act 1956 this was conceptualized by our first prime minister jawahar lal nehru you can see that five zones are there and north eastern now who is heading who is the chairman union home minister is the chairman of each of these councils union home minister not the prime minister you need to understand members chief minister and two other ministers as nominated by the governor from each of the states and two members from the union territories northeastern council is from a different act altogether was created by northeastern council act 1971 this you remember the statement would be in the examination that northeastern council was also formed with state reorganization act 1956 which is not true members include in the northeastern council assam manipur mizoram arunachal pradesh nagaland meghalaya tripura sikkim theek okay? hai now when you are studying zonal council with that you need to study two more things one is interstate council so ye sab static mein you need to you know correlate with the static portion as well recently 25th meeting of the zonal councils happened therefore we are discussing this interstate council is a constitutional body constitutional body remember this article 263 article 263 this is appointed by the president if i am talking about article 263 with that you need to also understand article 262 of the constitution interstate water disputes this comes totally in the domain of parliament 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 may form a tribunal for water disputes so streamline this thing with your static as well parlo versus payroll now the process of examination you know with polity some terms of laws they are also asking law legalities 
they have asked you know difference between a lawyer and an advocate upsc has asked so you know what are the rights of the prisoner okay section 432 of the criminal procedure code 1973 says what is difference between furlough and payroll parole now students basically understand parole is not a matter of right it's not a matter of right whereas furlough is a matter of right 21 days furlough a prisoner can get to maintain the social ties okay for example you know if the marriage of daughter is happening for one or two day the person the convict can go and attend the marriage or on the health grounds of a family or relatives to maintain the social ties it's a matter of right whereas parole is not a matter of right it is given by the state government in consultation with the lower judiciary for example if 21 days you were out it will be treated as remission here in case of parole for for example 90 days you have got the parole or 30 days you have got the parole then in this parole it will not be treated as remission after coming from the parole back into the prison the prisoner has to the convict has to you know complete the sentence this is this is the difference between these two things period of furlough is treated as remission of the sentence okay grant of parole does not disqualify a prisoner from the right of furlough this is also important with the parole a per prisoner can also apply for furlough as well okay period spent on the parole is not counted as remission of sentence and maximum up to 90 days in a year can be given reasons for granting parole have to be specified by the jail authorities why the parole has been given so prisons act of 1894 is there prison reforms we have talked about modernization of prison model prisons act uh, uh, has been there by the ministry of home affairs postal voting voter turn around is a big concern in india but more and more people more and more youth are participating into the electoral process elections are the election is a glue that binds citizen from the state okay and free and fair election is not the ceiling but the floor of a democracy in india we have given postal voting rights to some people that if they cannot come to the polling booth they can have a uh, uh, provision of postal voting service voters people in the armed forces the armed police forces of the state government and government servants posted abroad can avail the postal voting voters on election duty they can avail voters above 80 years of age or pensions with or persons with disabilities can avail this voters under preventive detention preventive detention understand convict and preventive detention are two different categories for that also a lot of debate is happening we'll talk about it later on can avail recently journalists have also been accorded with the rights of postal voting so what upsc can do that which of the following they will give you five six options and into that you have to select which of the following persons can avail the benefit of postal voting in india for that you need to remember this avgc a, a council has been created animation visual gaming and comics promotion task force this task force uh, when i ask in offline classes this task force is created under they will say niti aayog for everything niti aayog is not the answer okay it is by the ministry of information and broadcasting understand students this sector of the economy is going to boom for that how do we promote how do we curate how do we regulate for that regulation it's a part of governance process we have a task force the gaming industry is booming in india uh, in both the sectors now the online gaming particularly the online gaming is being regulated the gst of 28% the government is slapping on the gaming industry whether it is a game of chance okay or a game of skill to capture the 5% of the avgc global market which will be approximately 40 billion us dollars by 2025 40 billion us dollars and it's this sector is while you know the projected growth of you know by the world bank imf they are projecting that the overall uh, growth in the global market is going to slump is going to slow down from 6.6% of india's growth it has projected that now india's growth will be 6.3% itself in 
uh, with that economic growth this sector particularly is going to grow with the 25 to 30 percent and over 1.5 lakh new jobs will be created so they will ask that this task force is created under which ministry horizon 2047 framework okay this will be a very simple and factual question basically this is a pointer to substantiate in the mains examination whenever we are going to talk about Indo-France relations. Indo-France relation has, you know, signed Horizon 2047 framework. It's a it's an umbrella framework in which we are going to, you know, resolve and coordinate on different policy grounds in the domains of defense, nuclear energy, space, to eliminate single-use plastics and a five-year Sensen visa plan also. So this is with the France, with which country? Between which two countries Horizon 2047 framework has been signed? As simple as that question will come in the examination. Just like OBOR is with which country 2016 prelims, they have asked this question. The two nations adopted three pillars focusing on the security, planet and people. Security, planet and people guiding the bilateral ties for the next 25 years. Okay, after 25 years, 2047. India is projected to become a developed nation by 2047. Okay. Global Food Regulators Summit 2023. Global Food Regulators Summit 2023. Here, students, the food regulation, you know, is, is very important. In India, the FSSAI is responsible. FSSAI is responsible for it. So this they have they have talked about you know three initiatives: Food O Copia, a category-wise monographs for all the food categories will be prepared. Food O Copia. Okay. Sangra. Sangra is a comprehensive database of food regulatory authorities from 76 countries worldwide. English and six Indian languages will be there. Food regulatory authorities, for example, you know, research and development is happening with respect to the trans fat, with respect to the composition of particular ingredients into, into a food product. So there, this database will help in practicing good manufacturing practices and transmitting good manufacturing practices from one one country to another countries common digital dashboard unified it portal providing comprehensive information on the standards regulations notifications advisories guidelines contamination limits and the latest developments on food regulators in india so it is about enhancing it the theme of the summit was one earth one family one future you know g20 one earth, one family, one future. So guys, current affairs crash course is live and soon it is going to come offline as well at different centers including Delhi. So you can join the current affairs crash course in which I'd be discussing, you know, in detail about topics in a very organized manner. Subject wise organization would be there and into the subjects also sub classification is there linkage with your static portions and developing an acumen to solve the previous year questions so that you develop an ability to understand the with the knowledge base what are the peripheral demands of the question okay so you can definitely join this thank you guys and let's meet tomorrow